Hello peeps, my name is Nabil and welcome to a new tutorial. Um, before I start, I'll just state that it's a good idea to at least know the basics of After Effects, having played around, know what keyframes they are, placing them too. Um, and that probably goes from this point on into the other tutorials too. So, yeah, today we're going to be taking a look at the graph editor, um, or more precisely, keyframe interpolation. Um, normally when you plot down a keyframe it's um, very monotone um, and if you want to live in those keyframes up or give them a different motion that's where the graph editor comes in. Um, there are some default um, eases in uh, After Effects which are already programmed in and you can also customize it yourself so that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, yeah, I'll see you on the other side. So I've set up this example, um, which shows you what is already in the program. Um, on the top, we have the linear keyframe, which is the one that you always see when you pop down a keyframe. The second one is the EZs. Um, which does what the linear does, but in a more fashionable way. You can see how it kind of eases slowly in and slowly out. Ease in um, does the motion a lot faster and eases in, meaning that it stops um, uh, very smoothly instead of uh, the linear one where it just stops um, uh, like a brick, let's just say it like that. And ease out is where the motion comes less and it eases in very slowly. Kind of confusing, but uh, you get what I mean when we actually look at the real graphs. So, um, let me just move everything. Show you, uh, this would be better show you the linear keyframe first so if i press u to show on my keyframes here um you're probably familiar with this form when it is you plop down a keyframe um a flipped rectangle let's just choose the rotation and to get in a keyframe or the graph editor sorry all you got to do is press this button it'll show you this view um right now we're in the speed graph um and um, there's also the value graph, which is a better way to illustrate this. Um, what the linear keyframe does, it keeps its speed constant throughout time. So on the left side right now, because we've chosen the value graph, you can see that we have the rotation and it's set to go from zero to a whole 360 from one second to three seconds. If we then chose the speed graph, you'd see that shows how many degrees it'll do per second instead. Kind of self-explanatory. But um, as I said before, it shows you that it's constant throughout time instead of having some weird uh, motion to it. This is the basic keyframe. Um, yeah, you can see both keyframes lined up here by pressing the reference graph. Before I go further, I'll just explain uh, these buttons down here. Um, auto select graph type is exactly as it says it auto selects between these two sometimes I'm not sure but it'll show you the reference graph too. I don't really mess with these um, I, I just don't I've never messed with these before not really needed to but the value graph is where it'll show you the value on the left side and the speed graph is uh, speed per second the difference between them are that in the value one, it'll show you, let me just quickly do this. Um, you know what? No, I'll show another example. But um, speed graph um, is different when you manipulate it than it is with the value one, at least um, displayed wise. So if we jump from the linear keyframe down to EZs, um here showing the keyframes you can see that it now has this time watch kind of thing um and if again i highlight these keyframes and go into the graph editor you can see that it looks different 
Um, instead of being all monotone, like with the linear one, this one actually has some easing to it where it slows, slowly starts, still does the motion linearly in the middle, but uh, then eases out and then again. And here you can see the difference between the value and speed, how this creates a, an almost half circle where it starts off slowly, has its momentum here, and again, um, eases in slowly. Um, you'll get used to what you want to uh, use for different motions, but for now, the value is okay. And the easy is, is kind of like this. It, it'll always be like this. Um, down here, you can press the easy ease button and it'll... Uh, do exactly this motion for whatever type you're going to be doing. Um, so if I show you the ease in, you can see here, we're right now on the value graph. Here it starts very fast and eases in, meaning that the motion kind of takes place here and it eases in here in the end. And if you take on the speed graph, goes from zero speed to a faster speed um, in the start and eases all the way to the end and creates a very smooth landing. Easy out is exactly opposite. It does goes from zero easing slowly and then does the motion in the end Just here. goes there slowly and stops here. Um, I can just show you here. There's the opposite and if I show the value graph you can see that in the well that's kind of hard to differentiate but in the easy out it starts slowly does it motion and stops it there. So I've set up another example here. Um, here we have three cubes coming in very monotonely i'm pretty sure um let me just check no actually not they're all already um easy east but if you start with the linear one you can see how it just comes in slowly and um, if i actually highlight all these press f9 it'll automatically easy ease them so that all of them have that shape that the easy ease has and um, what you can do is right click if you can press F9, go to keyframe assistant and then press EZs and you can press EZs in or EZs out and see the hotkeys for them instead. So this example is kind of set up to show you what the different EZs would look like in an animation. So instead of having to create an EZ in here, that's kind of hard because it's not linear. Let me just switch linear. Go to an EZs here. Or, sorry, this was an ease in. You can see how that motion is taking effect. But to create an extreme easy in would be to actually start off with easy ease as a template and then just dragging these handles to, to do the motion. So here we have ease in very fluid and smooth landing. Or we can just do the opposite and dragging the other handles this way and it'll ease out instead. This is the extreme example. And the cool thing about Graffiter is that you can customize exactly how you want the motion to be. So if I want it to be like very fast in the middle and easing out and easing in at the same time, just drag these handles and do the same for the others and it'll look like this instead. And it depends on your project and how you actually want your motion to be. But normally, uh, what I do is just make some keyframes. It'll look like this. F9, all of them, easy ease them, and then play around with the handles on how I want them to do to be. So if I want the motion to be fully uh, ease in like this, and I can just have these start 
exceedingly fast instead of slowly. Look like okay, this. So it's all about just playing around with these handles, and you can also see this in the value graph. But since we're playing around with the position, um, it'll look like this. Unless you actually separate the dimensions, and then you can change these. So the graph editor goes for everything. Um, I'll show you. Let's see here. Um, if we animate the scale. Um, 24 and forward, zero here, or actually switch it up, let's do this, like this, so it goes from zero to 200. You can actually, if you want to overshoot it, what you'd normally do is maybe say, okay, let's go to 220 here, go a little less here, and, and then round up with 200. This is what you'd normally do. And then maybe ease it out to uh, make it, oops, make it look a lot better. But with the graph editor, what you can actually do is you can all just use two keyframes and um, or shoot it instead. So if I go to the value graph, this is what it'll look like. Easy eased. But if I take this handle and overshoot the motion instead, so it goes over the final the final value, you can see that it gets very big and then small. And it's all about how you play with the handles as I keep repeating. So we can all overshoot undershoot it here. If I just again take it from here and um, see here, got this kind of motion. See how it undershoots, but if we overshoot it, um, I don't know, let's just smooth it out and then see how it goes over, over those 200. I can also be displayed in the speed, but um, you'll get used to again what kind of graph you'd want to take instead. And literally, this goes for everything that you can keyframe. So once you've mastered the graph editor, you should be able to create very good animations and um, transitions too. Um, so yeah. Hope you play around with the graph editor because it's one of the most powerful tools in After Effects. Without it, you'd get very boring and monotone animations. And as I said, if you do master it, you're, you're probably already mastered After Effects too. So yeah, I'll, um, I'll see you on the next one.